Studios. Friday, January uh, 13th. Friday the 13th, Rip. Holy shit. Hope you're not superstitious. Are you superstitious, Rip? No. Friday the 13th, Lila Studios on fire. Got that cut off. Got that cut off. Rip didn't have his microphone as usual. Hey, I always forget to say go like, go subscribe. I put this thing in the video the other day, Rip, and I said go like, uh, like, 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 and a bunch of people actually did. We need you to like it. Go hit the like button right now. If you happen to be watching right now, press the damn thumbs up button right this second. Tell them, Rip. Smash. We talking about smash. You're on fire today, We're Rip. I talking tell. about smashing Mandy Rose or hold on, are we or, do or 30 what? seconds yet before you start? Oh, talking? yeah, I haven't said anything bad. My goodness, all I said was smash. Yeah, and who doesn't want to smash Mandy Rose? <laughs> I'm not plugging her OnlyFans or whatever thing she does on there, but my god, I bet Vince McMahon, I bet he'd pay her 20 million dollars alone, just like he did the rest of them. Do you have your uh friend Toby microphone? I can't see it. It's what's so right here? I can't see it. It's so little. Well. Now I got to bend over. Hey, your boy, your your boy, Eric Jimenez. My boy. Oh, I want to tell you about Eric Jimenez. He said, get, no. he said, no. get you one of those headsets with the microphone. Oh on. yeah. I used that yesterday or the other day on the uh, Big Ray Hernandez show. Hey, let me tell you about Jimenez now, Eric. Well, he comes up to me. Over. He comes up to me and he's posing right mm -hmm. because he was two ninety. Now he's two eighty four. He's lost six pounds in a week. Hey, it's almost it's, like your. Hey, diet, is your sister it? still working in Seymour? I don't know. Yeah, uh, see how that see how that didn't match when I told you about my weight when you got to Lila Studios today. What about your weight? I said I'm at two thirty nine today, and you said, "Hey, is your sister still teaching? She back teaching?" Well, she Remember? is. So yeah, you just is. tell me the big Eric Jimenez story, your boy, <laughs> and I'm going to say, "Oh, hey, is your is your sister still retired?" Yeah, she is. It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Huh? Oh, I, how does that make you feel, Rip? I couldn't remember what you said anyway. So what the hell? Yeah, but no, <laughs> you know when it, when I tell you about my weight loss, my success story, me going from two fifty to two thirty nine, eleven pounds in eleven days on the road to twenty and twenty, so I can be an Apox wedding and fit in my tuxedo. You don't give a shit. But boy, I tell you what, when your son Eric Jimenez loses four pounds, going from three ninety to three eighty four, who couldn't do that in their sleep? Then you want to put it. Then you want to put it over on this show. I'm. I might just quit today. Oh, I was. I was going to give you a dime to call somebody who gives a shit. I think it's a quarter, right? not a dime. Well, they, now there ain't no pay phones. Well, yeah, but they were a quarter. Not a, not uh, well, but uh, it started out when I was a kid. It was a dime, uh, and then it went up to a quarter. Hmm. Remember at, at, at Crossroads Gym and Seymour, we put the quarter. Still there. The, that phone's still there. The phone's still there. Awesome. Am I going to get you a big boy mic again? That phone is still there. Last time well, I was it's there. spinning around? It's the phone around. was still there. This is the Fred and Toby microphone. Hey, Wednesday, I was on with uh, the vet, Opinion Haver, Haver. and or is it Haver? Big Ray Hernandez did their show. We did an NXT review rip. I bet that was uh, <laughs> NXT, FL. baby. Was that FL? You know, I try not to just be like negative. I tried to watch it, and, mm -hmm. and then I try to picture any of those guys on that show. It's the first time I've ever watched. It. Was I've it never great, was it the greatest show you did that day? Well, probably, but okay. I tried to watch it and be kind. And, and number one, I've always said I don't think developmental should be on national TV. No, they shouldn't. It just shows you how shitty they are. And number two, I try to picture these guys, which wrestling has changed a lot. WWE still has some decent looking guys that actually look like wrestlers, some. But I try to just picture these guys like in the WWE or in the Attitude Era, let's say. And I'm like, man, like night and day. Well, one thing is the guys that were working in the Attitude Area, they wrestled every day, didn't they? NXT at least practices, I would say, every day. Pretty much. And this is NXT now, not AEW. NXT, I think, still. No, they probably do, but they don't. They wouldn't be having matches every day in front of a live audience. Yeah, I don't think that's probably the whole entire reason. I think the whole entire reason is they look like men back then, and right. they were older right. back then. I mean, you didn't make it until, I mean, Mick Foley. I mean, how long was he around other places before he? Not that long. Oh, she had. Before he got to WWE? Yes. What did I just say? What do you consider not that long? Most 
most times it would be a 10 year wait at ye at least. Well, that's a long time. You don't but, wait yeah. 10 years now. I mean, if you get half these guys I looked up in NXT mm -hmm. were started in 2018, 2019. Because there ain't no place they can go anyway. That's why. We're going to start out this show in the first five minutes of being impossible. So you're going to tell me that yeah. Mick Foley just had all these places to work. Territories were, I mean, he, he came in with, with like Memphis was still kind of going or whatever, USWA. Uh-huh. Where I mean, he was around. And, and so that you're saying that's, oh, 10 years. That's not very long. I think it's a long time. Steve Austin, he was around for ever before he made it to the WWE as Stone Cold Steve Austin. Forever? Compared to nowadays, yeah, forever. I'm gonna. Is there any chance you could ever just like agree with me and say no, yes? You just want me to agree with you, well, not just, even. No, no, just once. Not, not always. Just one time. I agreed with you when you said, "Oh, I'm not trying to put myself over, but I am. I, I lost all that weight." <laughs> I said, and, I'm, "And what did I say? Well, why'd you get that fat to begin with, you lazy lard?" You know what else is very hard to do? I go, I go back and try to do clips of this show, uh -huh. like. I tried to get on Vince McMahon the other day and I wanted to, I went back through to make this clip to refurbish uh -huh. it on YouTube and I bring up Vince and it's just like this. Why? Well, oh, we lost all that weight. I mean, we can't even have like a, a we haven't segment, said nothing about Vince. like a segment. Like right now I was trying to have like a segment on the NXT oh, yeah. thing. And then you go to, why'd you lose? Why'd you get all that weight? You fat ass. We, well, you we start talking about, you start talking about Eric Jimenez's weight. <laughs> No, I you're the one who's talking about your weight. I was already oh, oh, so you just do whatever you want. You're just like uh, uh, Skip Bayless and, and and Shannon Sharp, aren't you? Yeah, you you're not Shannon. At all. There's, there's you're, shows not you're quite Skip, like ours. You're Skip Bayless. Was that you dinging or me dinging? I don't know. Probably you. I don't know. I don't. You see sit it. there on your phone the whole time. You're like what a little high do? school girl when it comes to these cell phones, man. No, I'm like a young high school. Put your school damn girl. cell phone away and do this show and quit worrying about it. Okay. Is it plugged in? Who's looking at my Instagram? Who's texting me? Who's messaging me? There's a lot of like a little high school girl. <laughs> There's a lot of hot bitches out there need, <laughs> needing needing mature males uh, that you know weigh less than two thirty nine. <laughs> you're mm. two thirty nine, right? Two thirty nine point zero. Okay, but you're six six, so that's... I'm six four. Oh, okay. Well, you're taller than Hogan. I saw the the video. So anyway, and, and, and who am I taller than? Hey, Michael Costello, shout I'm out! I'm taller you. than Michael Costello. We're not getting to Dutch yet. Hey, oh, okay. shout out to you, Michael Costello. <laughs> He's in green. He put on uh, the uh, the YouTube channel the the man who or uh, Hulk Hogan fears or whatever. Every time somebody says something on there, he always puts Hogan scared of me. I think that's pretty cool. Puts hey, at least he puts me over Rip. You know, well, somebody's got to. Well, yeah, Lord knows it's not going to ever be you. Hey, so the NXT, I just didn't. Um, I didn't like it a lot, but Steiner's son was on there. I was expecting about what I got from him, but the crowd apparently has already turned on him. Well, because he's being pushed. I the mean, crowd's hell. They booed Cena for how many years? Well, sure, yeah, yeah. They, they hate when when Vince McMahon. Uh, yeah, but says, this is NXT. They usually don't. Not to my knowledge, maybe they do. This is still NXT, man. Like he's already getting booed before he even makes it to tv real tv well i guess a, a lot of guys they're at nxt a long time and they never even get on their tv they're paying dues like that i guess I he was brought up as a, he's obviously going to be a superstar well, so they're shoving him down their throat and then so he can get more experience in front of uh having the live matches and just trying to force feed experience on him. All he's doing is doing what he's told. Yeah, but they're all getting experience. They're all doing the same thing. They're all in NXT on TV. That's not so, what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, and there are people at NXT that don't even get on TV. I don't that know. That have been there for years. Oh, I doubt it. I okay. Well, Tony Khan does it, don't he? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. When OVW, was there a bunch of guys signed at OVW that never made it on OVW TV? I think a lot of them were. Oh, I highly doubt it. I couldn't name one. Oh, well, did you go to TVs and have your... I watched your, it. I got it. Did you have your clipboard out and, and checking oh, yeah. everybody off? I did. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I mean, I can't name one that I thought always... Well, half the time I was in the class, so mm -hmm. pretty. I was pretty with it for most of the years. You weren't a geek. You knew so there wasn't the, too many you knew people... What the, you knew I, what the hell was going on. There's not on. too many people I saw in class and said, man, why aren't you ever on TV? You know?
Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I shouldn't say they just booed him. It was kind of a yay boo. It was like, let's go. What's his name against? Let's go. What's his name? They would do that back and forth chant. Oh, and well. the guy he wrestled was supposed to be a heel, I guess. That was a big problem with the show. The very first note I took, the very first match was, who in the hell's the baby face and who's the heel? I had no idea. Matter of fact, uh -huh. I didn't know. I thought I, I was actually wrong, and I didn't find out I was wrong until the end. Oh, you thought I, the other guy was? Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that just means they're yeah. they're FR. Yeah. Fucking rotten. So I was totally wrong. I mean, I, I didn't have a great idea, but thought I had an idea, but I was I was wrong. You are allowed to have some heelish mannerisms if you're going to be a heel. Yeah. Anyway, I wasn't real impressed with NXT. I gotta say. Well, you know. But shout out to Big Ray Hernandez and the vet, Jamie Williams. So how was the vet? Was he on fire? He was good. Vet, was you know, he vet, okay? vet knows his stuff. You know, he he know they both know a lot more than me, like wrestling, like who's who and who does what. And they got better opinions. Well, that's why he's an opinion haver or haver. That's or right. They do it better than me. I mean, obviously we're all you know, better than you when it comes to trying to actually talk about, about something specific because you just like to go to Eric Jimenez or Manny the Weasel Valverde. I or, didn't say nothing about the Manny King the Carl Weasel Valverde. Valverde oh, or but King Eric, Eric Jimenez, <laughs> Jimenez, he gave us that big five spot last week, remember? Yeah, he's awesome, man. He's yeah, over. And that's why he's And that's why I talk about him losing all that weight, him getting ready for a swimsuit competition now. Or well, if I mention Vince, he say, "Hey, the check don't bounce." Or AEW, yeah. "Hey, the check don't bounce." It don't. Or you got a bunch of yeah, worthless. Instead of ever just having an opinion and going with something. No, there's only one opinion haver, haver, <laughs> and that's Jamie the Vet. Yeah, hey, Doug Basham live was on fire. Went back and watched it. It's awesome, man. Well, Doug, like Doug's it. fifty years old and looks better than he ever looked. Yeah, well, I don't know. He looked pretty good. You look at some old stuff, but I know what you're saying. He looks great at 50. Him and da or him and Danny both when they were up on TV, mm -hmm. and they look they look good. Now they look or good. then? Then when they were on WWE TV. Yeah, I didn't like Danny. It. Danny got real big compared to Did OBW. He? Yeah, I didn't like when they had Linda Miles with him because she was so tall. Yeah, it sort of made they should have had a little girl with him. And she wore heels, I think. Yeah, so that's just. We never even ask him about that, but I'm sure he gets that question all the time. Sitting there and they have a girl that's just as big as him. And, out, and on you're looking at it. Well, who's that? Who's that girl that's as big as the guys? They're not that big. And they were big. She was just exceptionally big. Yeah. <laughs> she wore the gimmick heels. He was great. So if you go to our channel and you go to the live <laughs> section, go to go to Wrestling with Rip Rogers on YouTube and go to the live section, and then you'll see the Doug Basham. I don't know, Q&A, interview, whatever you want to call, shoot the shit. That was pretty good. STS, shoot the shit. Wow. That's okay because you said that past the 30-second thing, so that's yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. I only cuss every once in a while when when you make me, you know? I make you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Rip, let's get to, uh, let's get to Vince McMahon, man. You better not sell to those. Now, let's try to have a real segment here. Can okay. We try, All right. Can we try to do this? Real segment. Here we go. <laughs> You're fired. The, You're hired. Let's try to go a real segment on Vince McMahon without saying, hey, the check don't bounce. Hey, okay. he can do what he wants to do. Hey. Yeah. And just end it. Oh, okay. So Vince came back. Yeah. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. How can you come back when, you've, when you're sitting there and, you, and you've given $20 million out in hush money from – from screwing employees and shit. Okay. We're going to try to have a real segment. Vince came back. Yes. Stephanie then resigned. Mm -hmm. First question is, uh -huh. did Stephanie resign because Vince came back? That's what it looks like. That, <laughs> sure. uh, that's, what I, that's what I said. I said, damn, she don't want her old man there because when he's gone, now she can be the queen bee. She can make decisions. A stupid girl that knows nothing about wrestling She's been in her whole life. Oh, she wait a minute. Something. She ain't no wrestler. She don't know. She knows Get something real. about wrestling. Just sell her marketing things, whatever her job is to sell some. Stay out of the wrestling business. God. <laughs> have, her, ha, have her go an hour. She's oh. 
That's like saying uh, Bruce Pritchard. I mean, he yeah. doesn't wrestle. He's never wrestled. Right. Okay, but he's been in it his whole life, too. You don't think he knows anything about wrestling? Not like Tom. I didn't say like Tom. I mean, that's Tom is hey, really legit. Uh, I'm comparing him to some Mark off the street that doesn't know anything about wrestling. Oh, there are oh, there are a million the, the guys that hit, are, Mark's off the street. Uh, they're negative. Would they're you, ne negatory. So would you think Bruce knows something about wrestling? Oh yeah, and he's never wrestled. So Stephanie yeah. could be in the same boat. No, she don't. <laughs> she don't have the knowledge that Bruce Pritchard does. No way. I didn't say that. I just said she could have some wrestling knowledge. Well, yeah, she, yeah, she can have life. a first grader's education about pro wrestling. All right, we won't agree on that either. So let's okay. go back to Vince. Vince okay. came back. Stephanie quit. Mm -hmm. The rumor is they're going to sell. Now we're not going to get into the Saudi stuff yet, but the rumor is they're going to sell WWE. If Vince came back mm -hmm. and wasn't going to sell it, do you think Stephanie would have stayed? If he come back and wasn't going to sell it, I think she would. Yeah, I think she would have stayed. You do? I think so, yeah. Because she gets to be the queen bee. But you think she would still be the queen bee if he came back? Would he keep her queen bee? Or do you think maybe he... Who knows? Because he he got pretty much got rid of the other son, right? Or, or you know, I ask I ask opinion Haver that uh -huh. if they were, and then somebody in the chat put they were back in uh -huh. good graces, but didn't Shane do something backstage or put himself over in that pay per view or something? <laughs> hey, isn't Shane, that, hey, that Shane, why they hey, had that falling out? Yeah, Shane's unbelievable. Yeah, here's a guy fifty. He's fifty some years old now. He's fifty some years old now, and he's an executive, and he wants to uh, dominate the television show like he's a wrestler. All he can do is jump off into something. Cause oh, I, I thought you were getting ready to put him over. Unbelievable. Oh, was, hell no. With okay, them, them shitty punches, say, are you ribbing I was going to say, if you he's sit good, here and dog Stephanie and then come over and put Shane over oh, as a no. wrestler, I was going oh, to no. press end recording oh, on this no. thing. Now, Vince is famous for taking the world's worst bumps ever for the Stone Cold Stunner. <laughs> well, then again, the missus did too, but what the hell. Okay, right? let's get back to all uh, right, on get topic. Back to so it. All right. let's say they sell it. Mm-hmm. The hey, and, the, and the spot the stock jumped way up when yeah. Vince come back, didn't it? Yeah. So whatever it is, he's a smart he's a smart son of a bitch. So do you think they're now the, the internet went wild saying uh -huh. that it was they were selling to the Saudis, Saudi Arabia, somebody from Saudi Arabia. Just big, big wig, Saudi right. Arabia. Do you think or why? Like, can you give me a, like a real opinion on why he would sell it to somebody from Saudi Arabia? Well, he, here's what I'm looking at. Uh, he could do that because everybody knows he's got the money. A, they, a, they know nothing. So he could probably get the most money out of them because they don't, and they don't know nothing about wrestling. So they'd have to give him the job as something emeritus where he's the, like the head of it because he knows that better because they don't know anything about wrestling. Get real. They just, they don't. And when the Saudis are, let's say they're, they're bringing the price way up, 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 up. Now Disney or whoever the other people are, their potential buyers, they're going to up their ante too, just to try and get some bitch. And wrestling, wrestling is, is so uh, non-watchable now. And that's not me. That's the people that turn the TV on. They say, no, we're not watching it. The ratings are the shits. So the big money they're getting for that TV contract that Vince negotiated that ain't going to be happening no more. They ain't going to be making that money of it going up like the NFL and the NBA, et cetera, like that. I mean, uh, why? Uh, because their ratings continue to improve. Why uh, pro wrestlings are pretending to pre uh, continue to tank. Well, that, That's was my, that was my argument last week. Well, that was last week. This, and you kept week. saying, well, they get the TV deals. They made a billion dollars, which they did. They that did. Was my but, whole, yeah. Trying to figure out how that all happened. Uh huh. It, so was, it was a potential, but now the uh, wrestling fans have basically said, "Excuse me, fuck you. We're not we're not watching your lame shit. We got your lame shit on WWE, and then we got then I gotta uh, watch Tony Khan, which is a hundred times even worse. But we love Tony. We love AEW. Tony needs to get Cornette in there and and let him run TV and him just okay everything." Let's get back to uh, Vince okay, McMahon. Get, okay, get back you, to you're now you're on Tony Khan and Jim Cornette. Well, you know, I can't right remember in this Vince shit. McMahon. And I was talking we're in a about Vince McMahon segment. And you're on Tony Khan. And, and, I, was asking, and, and I was talking about your sister. And, if she was okay from a wreck, too. And, Jim and she Cornette. was online because I saw the green dog. Tony Khan and Jim Cornette. <laughs> I asked you a Vince McMahon question. You did. 
And we're on well, Tony Khan and Jim Cornette. Now, I brought up on the show the other day on uh, Big Ray Hernandez's show mm -hmm. that was, I was said. Was he on time? You know he's always late. Oh, he was not nine minutes late. I almost left. I almost, boy, almost boycotted, boycotted. The, the whole thing and said, I'm out of here. Nine minutes late. Can't have it. Almost left the damn show. That could have tanked Tommy because, Media. Because he was sleepy. He was tired. He didn't get enough sleep, Rip. Can you well, believe that shit? He was sleepy. Well, well tough fucking shit. Yeah. Anyway. So I'm it ended up being a great uh, Vaughn, show. Vaughn, I'm sleepy. It ended up being a great show. Vaughn, he, I'm sleepy. He ended up being great. So I'm, a, oh, you know, no it was heat. fantastic. No, he, it was the greatest show that day on. So NXT. Opinion Haver was on fire. Opinion on Haver. fire. So we're, let's get back to the did topic Vince, here. Did, uh, so on that show, I said, okay, kind of what you just said. Well, maybe Vince would sell it to them so he could still be in charge. Really. Yes. And then people in the comments were like, basically, were saying there is no way that Vince could work with the Saudis, like. He couldn't be told what to do. He would have to have 100% control. And those guys with a lot of money probably wouldn't give him that power. So I don't know. That's kind of what I threw out there as well. <clears throat> so let's, let's, let's. Well, okay, look, look at it this way now. Because he could do, it's like when Ron Fuller sold, he sold his, uh, his company to the, the, the TV station owner in Dothan. And Fuller just, let him take the fuller build it up here and sold it to him. And it went down, 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 down. Then he bought it back from him For, yeah. <laughs> at a reduced price. So Vince could do that. Right. Well, the Saudis, they're not going to know how to run it. There ain't nobody that's got the, the brains of Vince McMahon, how to make money in this business. That'd be the other thing. I, I just wonder if they did buy it, if they would keep triple H. Like in charge. I don't know why they wouldn't. Cause H. Okay. So let's go to this. Okay. We, we kind of talked about that. A lot. Uh, okay. One other thing you mentioned was the money. They got the most money. And then yes. people on yesterday or the other day on the show were saying, you know, the the money, the money, the money. Mm -hmm. To me then, I mean, Vince has so much money and he's getting ready to die. What's he going to do with the money? Why does he need the money? I thought he would be more interested in keeping the legacy of WWE and the McMahons than the money at this point since he's damn near dead. Well, I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, but then again, there's only one Vince McMahon. He come from the double wide trailer, right? Now, now look at him. But he bought it from his dad. Why wouldn't he sell it to? To me, it's to me, it's a big f u to his family if he sells it. Nah, God, yeah. why? How not? You, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If my dad sold whatever we had and said, "Oh, here, son, here's your two hundred and fifty million dollars." Thank you, Dad. I could then I could be like okay, then maybe, I could be like uh, Tony Khan and get and spend his inheritance money on AEW. Maybe I should maybe I should backtrack. Okay. Maybe he should give them the option first of buying it. Well, how could they buy it? They ain't got no money. Well, how'd he buy it from his dad? He didn't have any money. <laughs> you're right, he didn't. I mean <laughs> you're right, he didn't. They could work that out. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're right. They're a family. You're right. So if you want to keep the McMahon legacy in the WWE, but they don't even get along. Yeah, that's Again, the big F you to the family yeah. because they don't get along. Can you? I, That's I, back I, to my point. I, I can't imagine, like, if King Carl was Vince McMahon, mm -hmm. he's got you and Julie running the thing. <clears throat> and if Chili wants to work, he can work too. And in Vince McMahon, Wait, shit. Did you just say Chili and work in the same, same thing? Oh, you know, I, I, I mean, Clay Star. <laughs> I saw Clay Star's video. Clay Star mm -hmm. is awesome. Yeah, with the big, and, uh, yeah, dad, my dad, the king, he would. He wouldn't just sell it to the Saudis. I can guarantee you that. Oh no, not the king. He fought in the, he fighting in Vietnam, had his fighting for his country in the foxholes, dodging bullets and shit, coming back with all the medals. The king was. So if they sell it to Saudi Arabia, uh huh. Do you think there's already rumors about wrestlers boycotting, walking out, leaving, not, not no, doing it? they ain't gonna. I do mean, shit. Sami Zayn wouldn't even go there for their their pay per view. Well, Sammy, hey, McDonald's is hiring Sammy if you don't like it. You always say that, but AEW is hiring. Yeah, but yeah. I'd, I'd go to AEW if I went to Yeah, McDonald's. you would too, but <laughs> AEW can't. They got their own problems of trying to make money. They got their own problems of, of getting WWE superstars, and then they and then it, they just waste them. Yeah, they, they don't know how anything to do. Totally don't know how to do anything. I still take that money. Yeah, I'll take the money. So speaking of Tony Khan, I tried to watch a little AEW before you got to live the studios today. Rip first match was uh, Hangman Adam Page against um, Moxley. God, God, I can imagine that was rotten. I just don't understand starting out every match or all the middle of the ring, 
chop, stand there. Hey, chop me back, chop, stand there. Hey, chop me back, forearm, back, back, kick, back, back, headbutt, back, back, and not sell anything. And uh, how many times can you do that? Well, they did it that week, didn't they? <laughs> they did it today, Christmas. whatever. And then the very next match is the Jungle Boy and somebody, and they do the same thing, but in the corner. Chop, spin me around. Chop. At least they spun him around and didn't just. Well, I got, they're probably, chop, they want to say, hey, chop. let's see how many matches we can have where nobody sells, and nobody even registers. Hey, yeah. we're over. Get a motherfucking job. Jesus Christ. They do all these big moves, kick outs, and then he does that stupid buckshot lariat and clotheslines him across the lower chest if that's about as high as he got for the one, two, three. Look rotten. Must have worked. <laughs> yeah, worked. Oh. Close line to the nipples. I remember Regal. Close line to the nipples. I remember Regal. Look just like JBL's close line. Oh. No, JBL. Got kidding. Kiss. Oh, I got to say, he would have killed you. That's it's like we're in Germany and, and Regal make fun of the Americans. He goes, can you, can you fucking Americans have a match without throwing a fucking clothesline? <laughs> I just fucking laugh. But the good news is, Rip, the good news is I talked about it last week. I predicted it last week. I predicted on this show, Wrestling with Rip Rogers on YouTube, that the Jacksonville Jaguars would win. were going to beat the Tennessee Titans, and they were going to win their division and go to the playoffs and host the playoff game, Rip. And guess what happened? Just exactly as you said, you planned, and you what you did is you put a little negativity to, to push Tony to push that team. Actually, and it's it, positivity. And, and, and I predicted him to win. It wasn't negative. But, but, but I know, but, but you was knocking them to get, to get out of their skin, and then it was going to show Von Lylas. And then what happened, it was reverse psychology. Jacksonville Jaguars in the playoffs, baby. And it's all because Von Lilas. of wrestling with Rip Rogers. Von Lilas, Rip Rogers. We got Tony No, Khan you did. I didn't do it. You and did. his father's Jacksonville Jaguars into the playoffs. Here's a hand for Von Lilas for pushing Tony Khan's <coughs> team. You're going to put me over right now? Yeah, I'll it's put awesome. you over. Hey, hey, did you hear about Von Lilas getting they down both. to 239 <laughs> pounds for, uh, he got to lose 20 pounds in 20, or something like 20 that. 20 pounds in 20 days. Yeah, and you can do it. Of course, you can just cut off your leg and that'd work, for, but we'll, <laughs> we'll decide not to do that. For Apoc's wedding. Yeah, Victor, for Apoc's wedding. Victor, wet WWE, my former tag team partner, getting married for some dumb reason, getting married and I'm in the wedding. Didn't, and he, I, learn, didn't he learn the first time? And the I second, don't think he was ever, and the third, I'm not and the sure fourth, he was ever really married. Oh, he was just he was he living in sin. <laughs> Holy shit! I don't know. We shouldn't talk about other people. Now, you oh. know what? I haven't done in a long time. Rip, kind of forgot all about it. Was go through emails. Nobody ever really emails us anymore. Maybe it's either because they were just not over, or maybe because we do these lives every every Friday. And they just probably, they just you, jump on there. Probably you didn't mention it, and it's your job to mention it. Oh yeah, and somebody tweeted a couple questions too. Hold on. Tweet, I know. Twat, tweet, twat. You got anything to talk about, man? Well, we could talk about we could talk about Vince McMahon selling the We already thing. talked about that. Well, I know, but we could just keep on harping on this and harping on that. And I know there was a Don Burton email, I thought. Well, he's on fire all the time. All right, so let's just get to, I'm um, looking for this. Let's get to Rip. Your your other buddy, your camaraderie, or your what's the what's that word I'm looking for? The uh, camaraderie, com gimmick, or whatever. I don't know who. You, what are you trying to say? I don't know what you're saying. Dutch Mantel. Oh, the dirty Dutchman. You hey. are on fire. Dutch Mantel loves talking about you, Rip. Well, I, I would. Well, you know, just spell my name right, and just did they spell it wrong? No, I hate, but I yeah. just say a lot of times they'll spell my name with the R O D G E R S. I go, God damn. So somebody had spelled the some bitch right. Somebody tweeted about the um, the one incident supposedly that happened, wanted to hear it. So Dutch tells the story. And again, God, I was going to do the audio on uh -huh. this. I'll put it in someday. It's like when Chili's girlfriend is going, <laughs> when Randy's it's, it's getting. It's nothing like that. He's, oh, okay. he's not laughing. But what he does oh. is he always says, I think I try to remember. I can't really remember. But, this is what I think maybe happened. Yeah. It, it seems like every Dutch story he tells, he, he doesn't really fully remember it. But you know what? He's going to just tell it anyway. Well, he tells some great stories. 
And, it, and this story was pertaining to you and Scott Steiner. Said Scott Steiner slapped the shit out of you. He just put that out on his YouTube show the other day. He said Jody Hamilton was doing something and you came and complained about a match or wanted I to redo have... a match or something. That, no. And Steiner slapped you across the face. Yeah, but I, Dutch didn't really remember a whole lot about it, but just remembered. And if that he part. was, and if he was there, well, a first of all, I don't remember it. You think well, Dutch was just standing right there too? I never that's thought what about I'm that. Saying. No, but, 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 but I'm thinking. <laughs> I, I tell you what I do remember is one time we was wrestling in Ron Simmons' hometown and doing TV, and George Weingroff was working, and George is legally blind, and he worked with Scotty Steiner, and he and he messed up his Frankenstein or whatever, and I sort of and I went. I said, well, he's legally blind, you know, <laughs> and, but that ain't my job to tell him that stuff. So did it? he slap you then? So, no, uh -uh. but Rick, I think Rick Steiner says, I'm going to beat the fuck out of you. And I said, no, you're not. You'll just, you will murder me. <laughs> I will die. <laughs> and he just started laughing. Now did Scott Slider, did Scott Steiner slap me? If he did, I don't remember it. Well, hell, if Scott Steiner slapped me. Hell, he might have he might have been the, the trouble of, of me being half nuts and forgetting shit all the time. You might have slapped me so hard because I scared shitless of Scott Steiner. I shared shitless, shitless of his brother. And they used to have that dog that would they, they would bring. I can't remember. It was a pit bull or some kind of dog that would would bite people. And the Steiners, they would they would tie like Disco Inferno up and other people. And and if if you interfered or, or helped them out, they would going to kill you, too. So, hell, when I see this, the best thing I could say about the Steiners is say, hi, bye. And that'd be <laughs> and that'd be it, because I was afraid it's going to do something to me. So you're saying you don't remember getting slapped. By no, this. I don't. But if I did. Uh, but because I wouldn't go to Jody and bitch about having to do something. That's uh, what I figured. I, I again, can't because see uh -uh, I never had to re repeat no match with what he said. And then Dutch said I was, he said I was five nine, and, and I got a picture of him where I'm taller than him. Yeah, that was, uh, was that the second one? You never put that over. I sent you another, another clip that you never put over. And that Boy, was. Boy, Dutch just uses me to, for stories. Oh, he talked about the Savage fight. So it's funny that. That Lawler comes out and basically said that you whooped Savage's ass, and he was the one there, right? Dutch wasn't even there for the I fight. don't think he was there. Who? Lawler. Or, or not, a, not Lawler, but I mean uh, Dutch. Dutch, right. But because, I'm saying. Okay, now. That, that's what I'm saying. So me, the, the guy that was actually there and broke it up said you kicked Savage's ass. Dutch, who wasn't there from. Yeah, but Dutch's story is much better. I don't think so. Oh, doesn't it? You put Dutch over way too much on his storytelling. I well, think he's, he's kind of boring. Well, I mean, but I, I'm just laughing how he can he can milk that thing and smoke that cigar and look up at the sky. That bores me, huh? I bore. I like Law. No, I like Lawler telling it way better. Well, he's milking it. Well, it'd be like to Dusty Rose telling the story. It would be a great story. None of it's true, but you know, I mean, hell, you, you wrestlers we're they're inter, we're entertainers. What the hell, right? So Dutch said that neither one of you could fight. Well, I know I can't fight. Well, you beat up Randy Savage. That's what Lawler no, said. No, I didn't beat him up. That's what but Lawler I, but said. But I, 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 I did well, put and it that it, way. And then this guy that does the thing. Who, who is it that does Dutch's? He always wants to talk about you too. The uh, well, he, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a try. See, Dutch has got the cigar, right? I yeah, I don't care. So it's, it's looking out there. Yeah. What about your blink, Rip? Oh, he's saying I. He said you're blink. I'm I'm in a weird. Well, I've always you do that on purpose. Oh hell no! You have to, don't you? No. You just do it. Is that a twitch? Yeah, it's a twitch. I've had it my whole life. Oh, I know. <laughs> what I do hear about Rip? We're well, here. Well, he didn't see nothing, but I got stories in Dutch's book. Oh. And then they call it IWA. Uh, they, yeah, they whatever. don't know what the fuck they're <laughs> they call, talking about. They call it the it's IWA. It's got them ICW. It's not the IW fucking Hey, God damn. I forgot. I think. I think. Uh, Rip said. I, I said. Think, you would think Randy would just rip him apart. Why is that? And it was something about they were both working in Memphis, but they had also done that independent show uh, company together. I, is it yeah. IWA, the Puff Hotel? See, they don't even know what they're talking IWA, about. They were some bad no, I can I explain what it was? Yeah, in a second. Okay. Some bad feelings from that. So they got in the dressing room, 
and Sam, I said, well, that year, you son of a bitch, <laughs> whatever. I don't think Randy expected him to be there. He knew I was going to be and there. I was there two nights in a row. And we pulled him apart. We. we. He wasn't there. He said, or they got pulled apart. Mm -hmm. Well, I proved one thing. I can't fight, but he can't either. <laughs> that does sound something like I'd say. <laughs> so he has a hell of a story. <laughs> with, with Rick, I always think, you know, he looked the part. He had the dyed hair. He had a great I wasn't oh, tall enough. He sort of says you work very you know, big. Work, and he's a trainer. But he was always used in the late years in WCW and WWF purely as enhancement talent. What? How come he sort of didn't get like a more solid... Uh, well, he, he wasn't that big of a guy. He was like 5'9", and, and never was never was big. Was I was 248 and a half one time. <laughs> kind of thin, actually. Thin. And I think that was probably one of the, the main reasons. And Rip wasn't a good... Politician. <laughs> well, I, well, he's finally you got something. Right. He's definitely true about that. <laughs> Dutch finally is on his side. <laughs> yeah, I ain't kissing no ass. Fuck that. I was never really good at that. He wasn't either. No. So, but he does say he loves you at the end of it. Good guy. Good well, guy. say what the hell, right? So whatever yeah. he said, it's okay. I did, but I'm five. T I used to be five ten and a half. So first of all, you're uh -huh. taller than Dutch. You pulled out a picture. Yep. And you always looked way better than Dutch. Well, but Dutch's Dutch gimmick was he had that hair that long on his body, which was fucking awesome. Okay. No, it was a great gimmick. Okay, but okay. muscle-wise, you always looked way better than Dutch Mantel, body-wise. But, but but Dutch is comparing me when I would get down to bodybuilding contests and stuff, which I was small. But but that was temporary. Ronnie Garvin would say temporary instead of temporary. I mean, I don't know if that's true. but But anyway. So what do you think about Dutch telling stories on you? You like it, not like it, don't care. Give us a hey, little, give us a little snippet on it, man. Hey, when you're not a performer anymore and you're getting on you're getting on the air time for shenanigans you did years ago, awesome. Keep keep me alive, baby. They're going, who in the fuck Rip? I don't know, but he's in Dutch's book. He's in Mick Foley's book. He must have been done doing something right because they're telling stories about him all the time. He's on Dutch's podcast. Pull, pulling uh, Barry Wyndham's keys out of the fucking toilet in uh, center stage and getting that that story on there just uh keep spelling my name right so you like it you like the dutch oh, goes, hell yeah you like the dutch goes on and tells stories that aren't true about you well that's okay i don't get <laughs> it, 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 it nothing in wrestling is real let me ask this question okay if you saw dutch at one of these like conventions or whatever would yeah. you say something to him about it like no. would you you wouldn't even bring it up. You wouldn't well, put it over you at all. You could, but he'd just laugh. He'd go, you fucking Mark. I'm trying to get fucking clicks. Fucking you think cool. so? You think Hell yeah. Dutch has been around this business longer than me. I remember I remember when I was just breaking into business and I saw, I went down to Seymour and was watching Louisville wrestling. And it was uh, uh, Nick Goulas. And it was Randy Savage against Dutch Mantel. I never seen a match with so much intensity. This is when they were both young and just shitting and get it. I said, man, this is fucking good. So I worked with Dutch a lot, liked it. I remember when me and Randy would work with him in a tag, Dutch would go out there and, and, and Dutch would want to get over, right? So me and Randy's tagging in and out. So after about five minutes, all of a sudden, Dutch starts wheezing. <laughs> Randy says, we got him now. <laughs> he does double team in, out, in, out, in, out. He's going, damn. <laughs> so what's Dutch like in like real life? So when I was a kid, I would see him on Channel 3 wrestling. Uh -huh. He always seemed like a, a, a badass, like oil well, trough Texas and had the hair, like back hair, like you said, and the mustache and all that kind of stuff. But then once he turned into like Zeb Coulter and you hear some of these, he seems way more reserved and nice and whatever. So was he, was he like a tough guy in real life or what, what was he? Oh, he give, he just stayed in character and that was his tough guy uh, uh, mentality. That was his tough guy character. And that's what, and everybody in the old days, you, you all stayed in character all the time. But to you, what was he like to you? I never got past the character stage. I didn't. You guys were not buddies. I, no, I never. I, I, hi Dutch. How's it going? And that's really? it. Uh, you didn't hardly ever see a guy. You always had separate dressing rooms. You'd see him in the ring and that'd be it pretty much. The baby faces didn't hang out with the heels. They usually went to different gyms and everything. Never made a trip with him in my life. So can you tell us 
a hearsay Dutch man tell story that we can put on here that you've heard about <laughs> Dutch. Come on. I can't even something think. you've heard about Dutch. Give us a story and just say, I think I remember. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I think Dutch did this. Hey, I, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell Give you, us something. I'll Come tell on. you this. One time we went to an independent show. Let's just put it that way. You and Dutch? Yeah, we called the goof show. In other words, I come in and he come in. And neither one of us would dress in the dressing room because the guys were so. In another way, the guys was just acting like a bunch of marks doing stupid shit. Because Dutch was he whenever he was in the dressing room, he was always playing tonk, always playing cards. Me, I was just training in there. Uh, when you would have like, so where'd you dress at if you wouldn't dress in the? We dressed room? out in the hallway. You sure that was that that wasn't the one I was at because he was at that one show and and he dressed in the locker room. Okay, well I'm just talking about this yeah. this one particular time we had a show and we and we we didn't, wouldn't dress in the dressing room. It was just so disgusting god i hope dutch is watching this and he doesn't think it's true story i mean that's that's really a hot clickbait story there rip dutch mantel and rip rogers wouldn't dress in the locker room he thinks he remembers that dutch tell us if that's true or not <laughs> man i this is excitement here today boys and girls i just hope that dutch <laughs> takes a big puff on the on the cigar when he's doing that uh, and he can say i heard but then, because at the end he can say he likes me, so it's okay. God, Everything's fantastic. Dutch makes up a uh, story about you getting bitch slapped by Steiner, and you come back with me and Dutch didn't dress in the locker room. That was your chance to put something really cool out there, Rip. Well, I can't. Oh, hey, I remember one time. <laughs> hey, no, me and Dutch was working against Sting and Luger on TV. I think it was, oh, yeah? it was the last match, and Duck and Dutch took a. Uh, reverse monkey flip or whatever, and and I think his his back went out, so we had to still pull like six minutes with him. And I had to stay in the whole time because Dutch did his opening spot, and his back went out, and he couldn't even fucking move. I think I've seen that. Okay, so I I've seen that. so I'm all of a sudden I'm the littlest guy in there is the strongest guy. I got I'm last and they're tagging in and out and getting all their shit in, but they ain't beat me until I, finally they did. But you know what? That's the fuck? awesome. Awesome. And why they put me in there? Because I was fucking great. That's why. There you go. And I was the smallest guy in there. Toughest little son. You weren't smaller than He was than a tough Dutch. son of a bitch. I was only 5'9". Well, I was 5'10 and a you're half not, before I started I still don't think you're ever smaller than Dutch that I've seen. Yeah, but he had the cool hair and the cool cowboy hat. He didn't smoke the cigar then. He didn't? Well, not uh, All not I remember is when we were in that show and uh, we always argue Peoria, Illinois, I say. No, it wasn't Peoria. Uh -uh. When you said was Dutch, Dutch was hitting the ring with that bull whip, you said you better get out of there. Oh, yeah. If you're still in there. Yeah. He could usually hit it just right where he could he'd hit the top rope as you, right as you're going through, and it would phew, yeah, get caught around. And people go, ooh, because it almost got your ass. Who was that the other night? Was that AEW, WWE? AEW. So, okay. Somebody hit the ring with the chair. It was throwing it wild and went over the top rope. Oh, my god! To try to, you know act like he's hit and actually caught him oh. at the edge of the chair. The guy outside uh, just smoked him. And he, everything kind of just like stopped. Like, oh, shit. Didn't oh, he really hit him. hit him. Oh, yeah, he really <laughs> hit him. Oh, the best is when you yeah. hurt somebody and the guy's gingerly picking. Oh, are you okay? I yeah. didn't mean to hurt you. I'm yeah. sorry. I potatoed you. Right in the middle of the match. <laughs> what awesome. a good rib. Fantastic. Mm. Greatest ever. What else we got today, Rip? I'm going to have to. When I see... Uh, Scott Steiner, I'll have to ask him. I said, did you bitch slap me? I was going to ask you that. Well, I'll, next time I see him, I'll ask him, because if he did hit me, he hit me so hard, I I didn't even remember it. Now, if you saw, was he, I thought they were at that last convention we were at, weren't they? Did but you I, talk to him then? I just said, hey, that was it. Does he know who you are? No. No. Oh, okay. well, it, none of this I worked will, how many fucking None of this years? will work out then, if you didn't know who That you was are. a joke. <laughs> That was a joke. Uh, That's like saying to somebody not, not know who Vaughn was. I forgot was. he was at the last one. So you didn't really talk to him at that no, uh -uh. Indianapolis one? No. Uh -uh. So if you went up and talked to him, you don't think Steiner today would still be like, fuck you, man. I'll kick your ass. You no, think he's still uh, like that? <laughs> he's probably still like that, but uh, he's older now. He ain't got no testosterone in him either. So you don't think he'll try to fight you? No. <laughs> Why did he want to fight me? I don't know. Why he did he fought why did Dutch say bitch slapped you? I don't so I think the next convention is in Indianapolis. I can't remember when it is, Rip. I think it's January, February, March, April, sometime in May, there. June, July, or August. You got uh you got plans to go to that one by chance. No, I 
had hadn't looked at my hadn't looked at my my calendar yet. You haven't I, been invited or I, whatever. I, I, however I they do that stuff. I haven't got a I haven't got a calendar. It's usually on my refrigerator. I put a piece of paper with a magnet there. So, oh, you got a show here or whatever. Since I don't. But you haven't been like invited by anybody yet or no, whatever. Uh -uh. You know who will get you in? No, you, Romer. Oh well, Romer. Romer ain't missing that thing. No Romer, way. Romer's a legend. He was Romer's old. not missing. He'll weasel you guys' way in there somehow, one way or the other. You and the world famous photographer Scott Romer will be at that convention. I would bet my life on it. And while we're talking about Romer, how about a shout out to Romeo's birthday, man? He just had a birthday the other day. Yeah. How, how old is he? About fifty. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. Mm -hmm. Scott Romer, the man, the myth, the legend, the world famous photographer, the greatest photographer of all time, probably. He is. The former son in law of Dick the Bruiser, one of many, but the former son in law of Dick the Bruiser, Scott Romer. Happy birthday, buddy. Boy, what a shout out you gave to him. Yeah, man, that's I, why he's that's why he's the now he's why he's the man, the myth, the legend. I like Romer. Got the book out, he's over. And every time I talk to him, he, he's eating. Yeah. Is he getting fat? <laughs> oh my god. You need to get him on that Eric Jimenez diet. You know, they we need to have a uh a, a, a get weight off thing uh, see who can do the a lose weight contest a yeah i i used to have a, a a girls in high school i used to you gotta speak up rip okay i won't speak up never mind you won't speak up hey what vince what was vince famous for what's his favorite his famous world words oh you can fire me all you want he you go here good luck yeah. good luck the best is when i've vince, heard you lead a podcast before vince, vince <laughs> huh i said i've heard you lead a podcast before okay fire me it's fine <laughs> you don't even know how to turn on a computer okay well i tell you that ahead of time so uh, let me let me throw this out there probably okay. one other thing you won't talk about but we'll try it anyway big plans i hear you have tomorrow can you let it can, let the cat out of the bag at all what you're doing what no. you're doing tomorrow no i can't not one little snippet not no, one doing, little tease well we're doing uh me and romer are driving to berea kentucky we're going to do some voiceovers for some icw tapings and stuff like that for uh adam and rock parsons there's some of the stuff they got on a streaming thing, which I don't know what the hell that is. Hulu, uh, some kind of, I don't know what all them different things are. I don't even, I don't watch TV and don't watch that. So, so is this well, similar to what you were doing when you went to yeah. OVW at, in the locker room and you guys would sit down and talk about it, like the upcoming yeah, ICW right. match or whatever? Uh-huh. That's what it is. Yeah. I guess I see, I, I was there. So I guess I'd have to be, so, have a little bit of uh, expertise knowledge since I experienced it. Knowledge, and, baby. And then, and then I won't have to say, I heard. Right, you oh, were there. Oh, I could say, I was there. Right. Excuse me, that didn't happen. No, I was there. No, <laughs> shut the fuck up. No, I was there. You wasn't. I think we need to get you on that show, that Dutch Mantel guy's show. No, because he was shaking his head. We haven't seen this yet. <laughs> oh, I just got ill having to listen to Chili's yeah, girlfriend. Don't get no better than that. I want to see. Uh, you had the Clay Star video Just the limousine. Oh, yeah, I watched the moment. Oh, yeah. You gotta do that. Oh, hell, I don't know, but Chili was jumping the limousine. Jumping the limousine. Six foot twelve chili, Starcade. It don't get any better than That's that. Right. Six foot twelve chili, Starcade. That's two of the top things in the world. Starcade, big video coming out in March. Can't remember what else we got. Rip comments, uh, like, subscribe, all that stuff. You got anything left? Smash. I, I didn't. Did, did I plug my book? Let me see if I can find it down here. Oh. Down here in the bottom of the, of the studio there, somewhere. Wrestling with Rip Rogers. Go to Amazon.com. Get your copy. Lessons from Rip Rogers. Hey, that's the other thing I want to ask you about. We need to figure out your pro wrestling tees, Rip. I asked world famous wrestler Dylan Bostic. I asked the uh, the king, the leader, the uh, whatever of Hameen Media Group, Ben Hameen, 
Neither one of them have any idea how to get into your pro wrestling tees. We need to get a wrestling with Rip Rogers t-shirt out there. I think it would be on fire. I think it would be the the, the hottest item in pro wrestling tees. I think if, it, I think it would be the hottest item in pro wrestling tees that would come here. If we could figure out how to log into your account. Well, why don't we just make our own? We already have one. I don't really know how to do all that. Well, hell, you didn't know how to do everything else and you learned. All right, we'll make our own. Hey, we can have Dutch plug it. You can say I heard it was a good it was a good t shirt. Uh, and then we could have a we puffing on the cigar right there. Fold. Or maybe so it was is he having a, a non puff thing on. So is this thing on? Are we going All right, on episode one? yeah, episode forty seven. Worst show we've done in Well it looks like forty seven. I don't know how long see, but you can't see the seven. Join us next week when Rip has a new host for the Wrestling with Rip Rogers show. It should be on fire, baby. Is it going to be Clay Star? Oh, yeah, I'm sure it'll be great, whoever it is. It'll be Rip Rogers and Manny the Weasel Valverde. No, I'm not it's going to be the greatest one ever. Maybe it'll be Rip Rogers and Eric Jimenez. That'll be good. That'll be so great. Maybe it'll be all three. Next week, tune in. Wrestling with Rip Rogers. Rip Rogers. Manny the Weasel Valverde, Eric Jimenez, it's going to be on fire, baby. It will be the greatest show show you didn't ever watch. Big gold and a billfold, so swole that I can't get the shit closed. So I money fold and rubber band wrap, and when it pops.